that our eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord giveth, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
and the people of God shall say amen. Why don't you say amen again? Amen. We greet you in the matchless and majestic name of Jesus, who is Christ, the Son of the living God. We gather to celebrate the life of Brother Mary and Philip Green, and we extend to his son, his daughter, and their family the strong arms of Jesus Christ, who is able to not only sustain you, but to keep you during this difficult time. Uh, we come to exalt and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we come to help you grieve, but to also help you to praise your way through this difficult time in your lives. So we're gonna ask you at this time, um, some housekeeping chores, if you would please place your phones on vibrate or silence so that it won't disturb the service. Amen? We're going to ask you if you're not seated with the family, and even if you are, tradition is that the family remains seated throughout the entire service. But when it comes to praising the Lord, if a praise is in you, it helps to get it out. Amen? And so we ask that you would please stand as we sing the hymn of celebration, celebrating the life of Brother Green. My Hope is Built, hymn 364 in the AME Church hymn book. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Would you please stand and join the choir as they lead us and we all sing together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not, I dare not trust the sweetest frame. But holy me, oh, when darkness veils, when darkness veils, his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy my anchor holds within the on Christ, on Christ the solid rock I stand on other ground in sinking sand on other ground in sinking his hope, his hope is covered and his blood support me in the well-made flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all when he shall come, when he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, trust in his righteousness alone.
we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name, we exalt your name, for there is none like you. Lord, with heavy hearts today still, we come to say thank you. Thank you for being a faithful father. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being Thank you for lifting the heavy burden. Now, Lord, we, we ask you right now and invite you in. God, even in the midst of homegoing service, we ask that you come in and be the guest of honor. God, we can do nothing without you. So we ask you, Lord, to be with this family as they celebrate the life of Brother Green. Your hearts are heavy, but God, we know that you are a comforter. Lord, we know you as a burden bearer, as a heavy load sharer. We know you as a friend and a comforter. So God, we ask you to be all that you can be for this family. God, you take the heavy end, God. Lead them through the valley, the shadow of death. Understanding that they don't fear evil because... You are with them. And God, every leaning side, they need your support. So God, we ask you right now that you would move by your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. God, set the atmosphere in this house, a spirit for praise, a spirit for worship. And God, we realize that you said in everything that we should give thanks. Even when we don't understand, we still say thank you. Even when it becomes difficult, we still say thank you. So, Lord, we know that when the days and weeks and months and years to come, we know that you will still be with them. So, God, do as only you can, and that's to regulate their minds. Give them peace in their spirit. Calm their anxiousness and their anxiety. And let them know, God, that you promise to never leave nor forsake them. And when all is said and done, we know that you reign supreme. So we give your name honor. We give your name glory. We give your name praise. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And we'll all say amen. from the book of Job, Job chapter 14, the 14th chapter of Job, beginning at the first verse. If you would bear with me for a quick second. Modern technology. And I will be reading from the King James Version. Job 14, beginning at the first verse. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and is full of trouble. He cometh up like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth as it were a shadow and continueth not. And doth thou open thine eyes upon such as and one and bringest me into judgment with thee. 
Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one? Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasted away. Yes, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters as the waters fall from the sea, and the and the flood decayeth and drieth up. So man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man dies, shall he live again? If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change come? Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to the work of thine hands. Amen. Amen. I should be reading from the NIV version. Scripture reading will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and the 51st through the 57th verses of Scripture. And thus it says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised in person, and we will be changed, for the personable must clothe itself with the impersonable, and the mortal with the immortality. When the personable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortals with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting is of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. The word of God to the people of God. Amen. At this time, a solo will be offered by Izzy Siobhan. Siobhan Johnson, Reflections, will be offered by Sister Sharon Wilson, of the Greens class leader, and Elder Andre Blair. Blackman. Okay, thank you very much. Sister Sherry Wilson and Elder Andre Black.
And Marion had a million dollar smile. When Marion spoke to you, you could feel it. He was glad to see you. It wasn't just a hey. What Marion said was, hey. It made no difference if you saw him in the grocery store or whether you saw him sitting on his uh, porch. He was the same. For you all that don't know his favorite grocery store was Milo. <laughs> when the old Milo was in front of Kentucky Fried Chicken, Mary would go to the grocery store every day. <laughs> no matter when you went to Milo and you said, well, how do you know? Because I loved it too. <laughs> But no matter when you went to Bible, Marion was there. And I remember one day asking him, I said, Marion, we got to stop meeting this way. We always spending money. And he said to me, I go to Bible. I come to Bible every day. And I said, every day? He said, sometimes two times a day. And I said, get out of here. But I found out, you all, what it was with Marion. When he went into, I, from that point on, I started watching. When Marion went into Bilo, he didn't get a basket. He bought one thing. <laughs> Marion bought one thing. He would not get a basket. But Marion was a gentle soul, and you could see that through his loving on his little dog. And if I remember what that dog's name? Tiny. Yeah, his dog Tiny. And he took good care of that dog. Marion was tender hearted and would give you the shirt off his back if you needed it. Marion had a quiet spirit. Many Sundays I can remember he would come through that back door. He would take his seat in the uh, left corner back there and he wouldn't say a word. He was there without any fanfare. Once the preacher got through preaching, Mary would quietly exit out. For a year and a half during COVID, Marion drove up for parking lot services. Hardly ever did you see him not come on during that whole year and a half. When he drove out of the parking lot, I was standing there with the collection plate. Marion blessed St. Paul as he was exiting out. Not long ago, Marion called and said, it was Sharon that really did the calling, and said Marion wanted me to come pick up his church tithe. I didn't get there that weekend because something was going on here at St. Paul. But the next thing I know, Tony Armour was bringing me in, in Bella where Marion had sent his ties to the church. Even though his health was failing, I remember calling to check on him and Sharon said, oh, Marion said he's coming to church tomorrow. And sure enough, Marion walked through those doors he sat right over here. He didn't sit in his seat over here. He sat over here on the right-hand side. And what a blessing it was just to see him walk through the doors. How many of you know that this is not the end for Marion? But only the beginning. For to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. For Marion... His run for life is over. Yes. No more doctors. Yes. No more hospital visits. Yes. But in the early morning on Saturday, December 30th, yes. God made Marion brand new. Yes. On behalf of Pastor Lee, Reverend Buchanan, mm -hmm. officers, and members of St. Paul Amy Church, we honor and celebrate 
the life of our dear brother, Marion Green. Oh. 
everybody shall say amen. And say amen again. If the Lord has been good to you, why don't you shout out hallelujah? I want you to do me a favor. I need us to go to church for a quick minute. I just need you to help me with this. On my way home. 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 Come on, Lord. It's in the light you say. Oh, on my way home. them your strong arms that only you can take them through this journey. I pray for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The spirit of divine revelation that you would reveal to me what you would have me to say to your people. Condition this room for a move of your spirit. Allow your spirit to comfort as only you can. Send a fresh anointing, God. That makes preaching easy. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. And we all say, Amen. Amen. To this great family, we ask that the Lord would be with you during this difficult time. And um, to his son, I I want to say thank you for allowing me to help you to get through this process. And we pray that God will be with you to his daughter. Which one? Hey, you're from Charleston. My home girl. <laughs> Are you a member of my Mariah Baptist Church? My preceptor at um, Dickerson Mortuary in Charleston asked me, Deacon Seymour Wilder, asked me to please express his condolences to you. He's one of the deacons at your church. So he said to make sure, in order for me to go back and be in good standing, I have to make sure I give you that message. Amen. And to this entire Green family, I pray that God's strength would be with you. And even when the phone calls have ceased and the visits have ceased, 
you're going to need the Lord to walk you through this difficult time. There's a word from the Lord as is recorded in 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that if this, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed that we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also has given us unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And we'll all say amen. amen. I'd like to use for a subject today which is taken from the very first verse of this chapter. But we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have the building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. I want you to look and somebody and say, neighbor. neighbor. Come on and say it like you mean a neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, there, is there is a new address. Amen. Now clap your hands for Jesus. As we live this life, we start with childhood residences. And as I heard Sister Sherry talking about Newtown, your Newtown is kind of, in comparison, where I'm from in Charleston, is called the East Side. It's a different place. People who don't live there won't understand it. And those of us who did live there, we might not get along sometimes, but can't nobody else come in our part of town and take over. Can I get a witness, somebody? Now I need y'all to do me a favor. Don't act brand new this morning. Amen, somebody? So here we find we start out with a childhood residence where we grow up and we develop memories and friendships and, and kinships. And I don't know about you all, but I'm sure it's the same where everybody in the community was related to you somehow. And you could go to the next door neighbor and borrow sugar, eggs, flour, or whatever, and nobody was bad enough to go and tell anybody what you borrow. Today you find people, if you borrow something from them, they'll get in front of the whole neighborhood and tell them what you got. If you can't say amen, say ouch. You ain't got to talk about what you do for somebody. You don't know when you're going to need somebody else. Amen, somebody? But as we grow, we develop relationships. And as we grow older, we move away. Some people go to college. Some people go in the workforce. But wherever they go, they go through a change of address. And I don't know about you, but my permanent address is 3 Emily Drive in Charleston, South Carolina. That's that's the homestead. And even though I have my own house, my primary mail goes to three. I and mean, anybody ain't changed your address from your mom or your daddy's house yet? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah you're grown and your mail still go to your parents' house. Amen, somebody? But when we move and we go somewhere else, somewhere else we establish what is called a new address. And the post office has a form that you must fill out and submit so that your mail would be forwarded from the address where you once lived to the place where you live now. Amen, somebody? Here in this passage of scripture, we find Paul. 
is talking to the Corinthians and he's telling them about how much that he has worked and, and even though he's worked and he's developed a wonderful place here on earth, that this world is not his home. There are so many of us when we live in this world, we act as if though this is all there is to it. But I want to remind you that this world is only a pass through. We are only here temporarily. And even though we have become complacent in this world where we live, I came today to let you know, don't be comfortable here. Because one day your name may be called and your address will change. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Come on. He says, if this earthly house of a tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. This is the same place that God was talking through Jesus when Jesus spoke to his disciples in St. John, our favorite passage of scripture that says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many if it were not so, I would have, I go to a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be. You know the story. So here we find ourselves looking at the place where it was written earlier in the Bible. Now Paul is telling them that if this house, he's not talking about the residence that we live in. Now first, you've got to understand that Jesus was a tent maker. And a tent is also a place where people call home. But he's not talking about the physical, but he's talking about this part. Our bodies is the tent and the tabernacle of the Lord where the Holy Spirit dwells. And what Paul is saying, that if this house, somebody point to yourself and say this house. If this house were to be dissolved, we've got another place over on the other side that's not made with hands. He said, for in this tabernacle we do groan earnestly. Hold up a second for me, musician. We do groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. What he's saying that while we live here and in this body, I don't know about you, but we're going to go through some trials and tribulations. We're going to experience some hardships in this body. We're going to go through some pain in this body. We're going to go through some disappointment in this body. And in this life, we're going to have to say goodbye to somebody. But when we say goodbye, we understand that this is all a part of life. Touch your neighbor and say, this is a part of life. No matter how difficult it is, it is a part of life. For we are in this tabernacle to groan, being burdened. I don't know about you, but sometimes the load of this life becomes a little bit heavy. And I don't know if you remember the song, I'm sure you do, that says, why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for my heavenly home? I don't know about you, but there are some times that I'm tired of this life. There are some times that I'm tired of the tribulations I go through. There are times I'm tired of being talked about. There are times I'm tired about being misunderstood. Come on and talk to me. There are times that I'm tired of going through. But one of the things that we've got to remember that in this life, the Word of God tells us, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, you will reap of harvest of blessing if you think not, look at your neighbor and say, hold on just a little while longer. I don't know about you, but I understand that as long as we live, we're going to go through some things. But one day we are working. I don't know about you, but I'm working because I realize that I'm a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this barren land. I understand that this world is not my home. I understand that where I am today is not where I am to stay. I understand that I'm working on the building that is not in this world, but it's on the other side. I don't know about you, but I heard when I was a little boy, the older folks used to sing a song that says, I'm sending up my timber every day. When you see
mercy. Uh, praising the Lord. Uh, I'm sending up a timber. Uh, when you see, uh, when you shed tears uh, and have to give up the right for the wrong, uh, you're sending up your timber. Uh, whenever you worship uh, and go to the house of the Lord, uh, you're sending up your timber. Uh, so beloved, uh, I came to let you know uh, that while you're working, uh, while you're serving, uh, while you're praising, uh, while you're exalting, uh, while you're loving, uh, while you're forgiving, uh, you're sending up uh, your Timber, uh, clap your hands and say, Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Just like as a little boy, my first address was 2D South Street. It was on the projects in the east side. And we moved from South Street to Judas Street. And we moved from Judas Street to Emily Drive. And when I became a grown man, I moved from my mama's house. And I lived three different places before I had the house where I live now. Uh, and I still don't plan on this address being my permanent. Uh, but you've got to understand that in this life, uh, you may move from one place to another uh, because you're not settled where you are. Uh, I somebody would remember, uh, there was a song that the old folks used to sing. Uh, you've got to move. Uh, you've got to move. Uh, when the Lord gets ready, uh, you've got to move. Uh, you may be high. Uh, you may be low. Uh, you may be rich. Uh, you may be poor. You may be black, you may be white, all are precious in his sight. But when the Lord, when the Lord gets ready, you got to move. It's when we realize that as we live this life, we got to move from where we are. And one day your name will be called. And when your name is called, Paul said it best. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now there are some folks that think that everybody dies, that they go to heaven. And I want to remind you that you can't live like hell and expect to go to heaven. Can I get a witness, somebody? Can I get a witness, somebody? You've got to understand that you've got to have your business straight. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And hell too is a prepared place for unprepared people. But you've got to understand if you've got your business straight. Paul said that if we know that in this earthly house of a tabernacle were to be dissolved, we got a building, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And so beloved brother Marion Green uh, might have lived in Newtown. Uh, he might have developed friends in Newtown. Uh, he might have family in Newtown. Uh, but the Lord called his name. Uh, and as much as he loved Newtown, uh, he issued that card uh, that wrote a change of address. Uh, and when we realize uh, when our business is straight, uh, when we completed our work, uh, we can submit that part uh, to say I have a, a new address. Uh, I changed uh, from living in Newtown uh, to living uh, in a new city. Uh, I changed one new uh, and went to the new town. Uh, not the new town of Lancaster, uh, but the new city of heaven uh, where the streets are uh, paved with gold, uh, where the walls are uh, done with jasper uh, and the gates are uh, with pearls. Uh, but most of all, uh, when I get uh, to the new address uh, in this earthly house, uh, there is trouble. Uh, the windows uh, may be broken. Uh, the wood uh, may become rotten. Uh, the doors uh, may become old. Uh, but when I get uh, over to the other side, uh, old things uh, have passed away. Uh, I'm living uh, in the new city uh, where there will be uh, no more trouble, uh, no more dying, uh, no more crying, uh, no more sickness, uh, no more sorrow, uh, no more hurts we uh, But every day, uh, every day uh, will be Sunday. Uh, trouble uh, will be no more. Uh, I'm going uh, to the new home uh, where the wicked, uh, the wicked will cease. 
every soul will be at rest. Well, I've got a new address. If Brother Green can speak to you today, he would tell you, don't worry about me. Because I've been working on my soul. And there's a place that the Lord has for me. And I want to remind you as you live, every day you are to treat your life as it is your last day. Because it very well could be. Some of us live this life as if though there is no tomorrow. Some people act as if though we don't have to give an account to the Lord. But I want to remind you for every deed we do, there's an account that you have to give to the Lord. But in order for you to be competent, be comforted, comfort, comforted, and be confident in the fact that when this earthly house, this body, is dissolved and no longer here, we've got an opportunity to spend eternity with God. A new address. Yes, we're going to miss Brother Green. Yes, your hearts will long to speak with him and to see him. But be comforted in the fact that God knows best. And even though the load may seem heavy, he made you a promise that I will never leave you nor forsake you and that I will be with you even until the end of the world. Hear me and hear me well. The phone calls are going to stop. Amen, somebody? The visits, as soon as the chicken and the sodas and the drinks are gone, so will people. Y'all laughing at me, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. If you have a tent, as soon as the tent goes down, it's going to be just you and God. And I need you to understand that no matter what, and hear me good, there can be a whole bunch of people around you, and yet you still feel by yourselves. Amen, somebody? But I promise you that God will take care of you. He said in his word, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. And if there's anybody here who's ever lost a loved one, if you have a relationship with God, God eventually turned your midnights into day. Can I get a witness on that? I close as I shared this morning there are some people who have referred to me as being an arrogant person and I share with them I'm not arrogant but I'm confident I don't speak of myself but I take God at his word and when you can take God at his word come hell or high water you'll be able to stand in the midst of your stars. Amen? In Green family, this is storm. Whether you believe it or not, losing a loved one is not easy. But the good thing about it is even the storm passes over. I'm not going to tell you to grieve, and I've shared in funerals after funerals. And I'm going to share with you all because some of you I've never seen before. Stop telling people not to cry. Stop telling people God only takes his own. We understand all of that. But when a person is grieving, the best thing you can do is pray for them. Amen, somebody? And if you don't know what to say, I'm going to make you laugh and then I'm finished. I don't know if you come from the era where those old mamas and then grandmamas, when you talk just a little too much and you share too much business that you shouldn't share, these two fingers matches your top and bottom lip. Amen, somebody? And they grab it. Amen, somebody? Come on, come on, come on. 
I think my mama found a relationship with God before she died for trying to kill us when we were kids. But when you grab those two bottom lips and twist it, that means, that don't mean please be quiet. That don't mean hush. That means shut up. Amen, somebody? And if you don't know what to say to this green family, they don't need to hear your super duper religious conversations because they're grieving. Amen? And the best thing you can do for them, if you can't say I'm praying for you, stand by them, put your hands on their shoulders. They'll see you and know that you mean your best to us. But beloved, there's a new address. And I pray that when your time comes to move, that you've got your business straight, that you can change time for eternity. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. But now we thank you for your word. Your word that comforts us. Your word that guides us. Your word that keeps us. But most of all, your word that gives us courage and strength to press on even when we don't want to. So I lay this green family and their friends at your feet. And I ask that your spirit would minister to them as only you can. So God, thank you for your word. And I pray that your word will find a resting place in their hearts during this difficult period in their lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Why don't you clap your hands and say amen. Before we call the staff of Crawford Funeral Home, we, on behalf of St. Paul, we want to say thank you for allowing us to serve you. And thank you for sharing Brother Green with us. And we prepared a repast for you. Um, we're going to ask you at the conclusion of the service, um, Sister, um, we would ask you if you don't mind uh, leading the family to the back to the fellowship home. We're going to allow the family, somebody say family, to be seated first. And there's plenty space in the back. Now, I want you to hold up your right hand and I want you to make a promise to me. Say, I promise not to be mad with Pastor Lee. Now, there's some people would come and say, well, my sugar is low. Pack some candy and some mad in your pocketbook. Amen. You knew your sugar was going to be low before you left home. We're going to make sure. We're going to make sure this this family is taken care of first. So we thank you for understanding. And please don't tell anybody to pass the lead is a rude pastor. No, he's just telling you the truth. We're going to make sure this Greek family is taken care of first. Amen. Amen. So much so that and we have enough food, but if there's not enough St. Paul, we will go without to make sure our guests eat first. Amen. Amen. So we ask that you would please uh, Sister Mobley, you would lead them to the back, following the benediction and we're going to take care of you. May the Lord bless, preserve, and keep you. We're going to call for the staff of Crawford as we uh, prepare for the committal. We ask that you would please stand if you're not seated with the family for the committal. born of a woman had but a short time to live and is full of misery. He comes up and is cut down like a flower. He flees as it were a shadow and never continues in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death whom may we seek or succor 
but of you, O oh Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet, O oh Lord God, most holy, O oh Lord, most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O oh God, most mighty, O oh holy and merciful Savior, most worthy judge and eternal. Suffer us not in our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it is pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit him from earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection, the last day in the life of the world to come to our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, who for our sins are justly displeased. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right from henceforth, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so said the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, we ask that you would consecrate the food that you blessed when you created it, that it would be physical nourishment to our bodies as we spiritually continue the work of our hands. We pray this in Jesus' name. We say amen. amen. And I, before I give the benediction, are there any clergy persons besides Elder Blackman? Will you please just raise your hands? Uh, please forgive me, I meant to recognize you at the beginning of the service. Thank you for being here. 
And the next time you come, come on and sit up with us so that we can fellowship together. Amen. Amen. Uh, Elder Blackman, where are you? I enjoyed your remarks. So many times at funerals, we try to make it appear as people have been perfect all their lives. I thoroughly enjoyed. I'm sure if I ever had the opportunity to sit with Brother Green, I'd probably be laughing too. St. Paul will tell you, I am a jokester. And in order to be Christians, you have to have a sense of humor to be with some of us. Amen. Amen. To the musician, thank you for being here today. Grace, mercy, peace from God our Father, the love of the Son, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And we will say amen. amen. I'm going to come and walk you to the back as well, Sister Mosley, and then I...